deserve the glory and the honor and the honor as we lift our hands in worship. Sing with me this morning. As we lift your holy name, you deserve and you deserve the glory and the honor. Sing with me this morning. And the honor, my God, as we lift our hands in worship, as we lift your holy name, for you are great, mighty God. You do miracles so great. Sing it with me. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you, for you are great, mighty God. You do miracles so great. We love you, Jesus. There is no one else like you, mighty God. There is no one else like you. You deserve the glory. You deserve the glory and the honor as we lift our hands in worship, as we lift your holy name, is you deserve the glory. Oh, Father God, as we're about to go into your word on this morning. God, I pray that you would bless your people. I pray that you would strengthen them. I pray that you would encourage them. I pray that you would bring direction into their lives. I pray that as we go into the word of God, that they would receive answers to their prayer, God. I pray that burdens would be lifted from off their shoulders. I pray that the devil would be rebuked from off their case this morning and would be subdued under their feet this morning in the name of Jesus, speak to us about the success secrets of King Solomon and how to apply it to our everyday lives. Have your way in our lives. We say not our will, but your will be done in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Now on this morning, I want to take you into the Word of God in the book of Proverbs as we talk about success secrets of King Solomon. There are many success secrets of King Solomon, but there's one specific one I want to really zero in on this morning. Now listen to this from the book of Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20. Listen to what the word of God declares. He that walks with wise men shall be wise. He that walks with wise men shall be wise. Listen to the end of this verse. But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Plain English, you become like the people you hang with. Are you listening to me? Or they become like you. So if you surround yourself with negative people, they will destroy your faith. Are you listening to me? If you hang out with a bunch of doubters and people who are going nowhere in their lives, you will end up going nowhere as well. But according to Solomon, Solomon said, this is how you can tap in and accelerate towards your destiny or the goals in your life or the things that, that God have set before you. Solomon said, he that walketh with wise men will himself also be wise. That means if you are lacking knowledge in any area of your life, surround yourself with people who are much smarter than you, who know more about that area in their life than you do, and by you hanging around those people, you will gain knowledge and become successful in that area in your life. Now, I'm not just talking about, I'm talking about this for saved, sanctified, and full of the Holy Ghost people, because we know the world use all kinds of strategies. We are not talking about the world this morning. We are talking about the church, the body of Christ. So Solomon said, he that walks with wise men will himself also be wise. That's why me and my wife, we are very careful at 
What kind of preachers are allowed to speak into our lives? Whether it's through their books, through their CDs, through their tapes, through their videos online. We, we are very careful because the people that you listen to, those people influence your life. So we surround ourselves with anointed men of God, men and women of God, anointed books, anointed videotapes, anointed worship music. We are even careful who we listen to in worship because it affects our lives. It affects you spiritually. Listen, if I'm listening to a preacher or worship music and it's not bringing me into the presence of God, if it's not giving me a desire to pray and draw closer to God, that stuff goes out the window. I want you to hear me. You got to be very intentional about what you put into your life because the Bible says every, every seed bears fruit after its kind. That means whatever you sow, you will reap. If you sow failure, you'll reap failure. Are you listening to me? You know, there's an old saying among the old folks. If you hang out with dogs, you end up with fleas. <laughs> That's very funny, but it's real true. If you if you hang out with dogs, you end up with fleas. You know, the old saints used to say, if you play with a puppy, he'll lick your face. You know what I'm saying? So you become like the people you hang with. So the Bible says, he that walks with wise men will himself also be wise. I love the way the message Bible puts this. The message, the message uh, translation says it like this. Become wise by walking with the wise. If you hang out with anointed people, you will become anointed. Are you hearing me? If you hang around people that's knowledgeable in the word of God, that's a stickler for prayer and live in a holy life, that stuff will rub off on you and it will begin to affect your life. Are you listening to me this morning? You, If you hang out with a bunch of low standard people who have no conviction in their life and just allow any filth to come into their spirit, the same thing is going to happen to you. They will defile you. You got to be careful who you hang with even as a child of God. Everyone that called themselves a Christian is not a Christian. The Bible says by their fruits you are going to know them. Are you listening to me? There are a lot of people that's calling themselves Christian but they ain't no more saved. Are you hearing me? Going into Burger King doesn't make me a hamburger. No more coming to church make you a Christian. You are saved because you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. You repented and turn away from wickedness. Shout yes. He cannot My God, now watch. I want to go. Into, I want to stay in this flow right here. Now watch this. Let's go into the book of 1 Samuel chapter 22, verses 1 and 2. You got to be very careful who you surround yourself with. You know, think about it. Ten spies cause a whole nation to wander in the wilderness for 40 years longer than what God intended them to stay in the wilderness for. Are you hearing me? Ten spies, two of the people were ready to go. Joshua and Caleb, they said, man, the people are bred for us. Let us go up at once, Karabusa, and possess the land. For if the Lord delights in us, He'll take us into the land and he'll give it to us. But 10 negative people, my God, 10 negative people convince the people of God that they are grasshoppers in the eyes of the enemy. And those people believe the report of the 10 spies and end up dying in the wilderness. I'm not going to die in the wilderness. I'm going all the way into the promised land because I'm going to surround myself with people of like precious faith, people that dare to believe God, people that believe in signs, wonders, and miracles, not people who scoff at the supernatural, not people who mock the supernatural. The apostle Peter said, these men are not drunk as you suppose, but this is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last days, said God. A pound of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Shout yes. My God. Now watch this. I want to show you this. Let's go to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 22, verses 1 and 2. The Bible says, David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of Dullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down there to him. David was running from King Saul, someone who was jealous because of the anointing on his life, because of the call of God on David's life. King Saul wanted to kill him. That's a demon of jealousy. You got to watch these folk in leadership who get jealous because someone in that congregation is walking in the power of God. I, I've seen it. We've experienced it. I've lived it and walked it out. 
Watch this now. It's going to verse 2, and it's not always that case. And then you got these. I, I, I'll leave that for another time. Let's go into verse 2. And everyone, I want you to pay attention to this. And everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented, they gathered themselves unto David, and he became a captain over them. And there were with them about 400 men. Now, these men were wise. I want you to see this. They were in distress. They were in debt, financial debt. And they were discontented. They were not satisfied with the status quo. These men realized that there was more out there than what they were used to. They said, there's got to be a way out of my struggle. So what did they do? They connected to, I feel the Holy Ghost, my God. They connected themselves to somebody who had been anointed by the prophet Samuel. Samuel poured the oil on David's head. And the Bible says, the spirit of the Lord came on David from that day forward. This was the man who killed a lion and a bear with his bare hands. This was the man who took down Goliath with a slingshot on a stool. So these people recognize, I got to get around somebody that's walking in the anointing of the Holy Ghost that can subdue these devils off of my life. And because they hung out with David, the anointing of the Holy Ghost on David's life, it rubbed off on these men. And some of them became his mighty men. And these were the same men who became David's mighty army. And when David was anointed to be king. These men served in David's army to the point that when it was time to build Solomon's temple, these men that were once broke, these men that were once in distress, these men that were once discontented, they were able to give millions of dollars to the building of Solomon's temple. All because of one decision they made. They made a decision to surround themselves with a man that was anointed and walking in the power of the Holy Ghost. Shout yes! I feel the anointing here. Hey, Karababasata! I feel the Holy Ghost is talking to somebody. Now watch this. How about this one? The Bible says in Acts chapter 4 verse 13. Now when the Pharisees saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. The Pharisees realized these men are uneducated. They are unlearned. Ah, but the Holy Ghost had anointed them because they hung around Jesus. The wisdom of God was imparted into their lives. The anointing of the Holy Ghost rubbed off on their lives and the same miracles that Jesus performed. These men begin to perform the same miracles, the same wisdom he spoke with, the same authority he spoke with, the same power he spoke with. They begin to walk in it. Shout yes! You got to choose your friends wisely. You got to choose who you hang with. That's one of the greatest success secrets of King Solomon. He surrounded himself with successful people. Shout yes! My God! Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over your people this morning. I pray that you give them wisdom. I pray that you give them knowledge. I pray, God, that you give them understanding. I pray that every person in their life that does not need to be there, I pray the Holy Ghost would pull the covers off and expose those people so your people can walk away from them. You said, mark those that cause divisions among you and avoid them. Your word says, cast out the contentious person and strife will cease. God, I pray for your people this morning. Give them the wisdom to choose their friends wisely, to choose people that's full of faith, full of the Holy Ghost, walking in integrity, walking in purity, walking in holiness, walking in humility, and walking in the love of God. For your word says, love never fails. Minister to your people this morning. I cover them in the blood of Jesus. Remove every thorn from out of their lives, every distraction, every faith-killing, vision-aborting person. Get them out of their lives, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. 
my God. Listen, if you're watching this broadcast, we ask you to partner with us. We ask you to stand with us. Sow a seed into this ministry. A partner is anybody who sow a seed into this ministry. If you sow a seed just one time, we consider you a partner because you are helping us fulfill the call of God. And we don't take what you guys do lightly at all. We appreciate you greatly. Are you hearing me? So sow a seed into the ministry. You can visit us online. The information is on the screen. SeanPinder.net forward slash give. You can give through our PayPal account, the ministry PayPal account, paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. If you want to mail your donations in, make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 117442, Carrollton, Texas, 75011-7442. Remember, subscribe to our channel if you're watching us through YouTube and you will receive a notification every time we go live or make a new upload. If you're watching us through Facebook, like us on Facebook, follow us on Facebook, send us a friend request. We love you guys. We appreciate you. And we look forward to being with you on tomorrow morning as we talk about victory in your mouth. Victory in your mouth. And remember, Pastor Sean and Pastor Amy, we love you guys. We are here for you. We are believing God for your miracle. We are believing God for your breakthrough. We are believing God for your turnaround. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. See you on another morning prayer broadcast. Take care. Bye-bye.